Senator Doug Jones says white nationalism is on the rise. The Alabama Democrat chronicles his prosecution of two white supremacists in his new book, Bending Toward Justice, the Birmingham church bombing that changed the course of civil rights. We pick up the rest of my conversation with the senator, reflecting on the recent terror attack in New Zealand. We're having this conversation at a time when New Zealand is grappling uh, with the aftermath of a terror attack there. Do you see parallels? Absolutely. I, I, I think if you look at what uh, the social media and the Internet has done now, you know, the, look, the Internet is a wonderful thing. There is no question about that. But it has also got a really dark side where people can, can read things, whether they're true or not. It plays onto their fears. And you know, it doesn't take much. Some, if someone's just got a, a, just a screw loose just a little bit, it wouldn't take much in the privacy of their own room or on their own phone to just unwind it completely and pop it. And, then, and that's what we're seeing. I think people feel empowered to do things, and it's because a lot of what they see on the Internet, I think a lot of public officials are, are, are holding themselves out as basically empowering people to do that. I was really struck uh, in the book when you wrote about uh, the Klansmen who would gather under a bridge. Yeah. And yeah. you called them trolls Absolutely. under a bridge yeah. who gathered to plot out various things. And now trolls is the term that's applied oftentimes on social media where people, as you note, can project hate and right. find like-minded people from the comfort of their own homes. How do you fight against that? I think it's, I think it's tough. I mean, you know, we do have a First Amendment uh, in, this, in this country that has to be protected. And, uh, but, you know, I think one of the things that people do, I think they just have to call people out. I think you have to recognize it for what it is and call people out because words do have consequences. We see that. You know, the trolls in, under the bridge in 1963 were just like the trolls of our childhood memories uh, and those storybooks. The trolls today are a lot more prolific, and they're, they're, but they're still hidden. They're not under a bridge, but they're still hiding behind something. They very rarely use their names. It was, it's always some kind of anonymous or pseudonym. Um, but they breed hate, and we've got to make sure that we, we try to do everything we can. And I think that, that our social media uh, companies have some obligation to also, um, you know, help in that regard and try to stop that uh, and not give those people that kind of platform. Do you think white nationalism is on the rise? Oh, there's no question about it. I, I, th I think clearly what you see uh, around this country today, uh, it, it's on the rise. And it's, it's a little scary, I think, for folks. It, sh it should be a little bit scary. Um, and I think it, unfortunately, it was initially of uh, uh, white nationalism was more of a just nationalism. And it has evolved into more of a race issue because we do see America becoming more diverse every day. And that bothers people. It scares some people. They have jobs, they have families, and they're just not used to this. And fear is is, a, is an incredibly motivating factor sometimes, and that's what social media does with these trolls. They play on that fear, and people let, let, let it get the best of them. You talked a moment ago about calling out things. Uh, do you think that President Trump's response to New Zealand was sufficient? No, I don't think it was sufficient. I mean, look, it's it, it's easy to just express remorse and say our thoughts and prayers. That's what what everyone does. But I think it went, especially as the facts came out and that manifesto c came out that referenced, you know, what was going on in this country. He should have made a stronger stand. That's not what I'm about. That's not who I am. That's not what my political um, leanings are and made a very, very strong stand. I worry sometimes that, that the, the president is so concerned about losing some of his base that are that, that very far right. I mean, that's just a fact that he won't take those necessary steps. He has got an ability, if he would exercise it, he has right now got an ability to really change this discourse and not worry about the politics. Just the politics of it be damned. Do the right thing. As someone who has personal experience prosecuting this kind of hate, what do you think is the danger of not condemning this kind of white supremacist it, it, ideology? I, well, I think that there are people out there that if they don't see somebody condemning it, it's an implicit acknowledgement that it's okay to do something. That's the problem. That's unfair to the public official because that's not what that they're doing. They're not, they're not condoning it in that, that, that sense. But they've got to recognize and put themselves in someone else's shoes. And there's people out there that will see that as a green light to do harm. 
Um, in the minute or so we have left, I must ask about 2020 because you're up for re-election. Right. Uh, you know, some people looked at your special election as a bit of a fluke. Right. Uh, what do you say to people who look at the upcoming election here in 2020 for you and say it's going to be tough for a Democrat to hold on in a ruby red state like Alabama? Well, they're absolutely correct. It is. It's going to be a tough race. We knew that going in. Uh, but I don't think uh, Alabama is as ruby red. You're, people look at that and, and decide those colors based on just win-loss, and they don't see what's really happening in the state and in the South. And there's a lot of changes going on, and we get a great response wherever we go. We feel very good about where we are. It is going to be tough. I recognize that. We're, you know, I think all the politics these days is going to be very tribal going into 2020, uh, and we're just going to kind of bust through that and continue to do what we're doing. You mentioned Joe Biden in your book a number of times. If he jumps into the race, will you endorse him? Uh, well, you know, look, Joe and I are friends for a long time. He knows that I'll be there with him. He was there for me. He told me, he told me that for years if I ever wanted to do something. I think Joe Biden would be an outstanding president. I've all thought that for the 40 years that I've known him. Uh, I think he's kind of the, the, the kind of politician that the country needs right now, someone who knows how to govern, someone who respects the institutions of government. Senator Doug Jones, Senator, thanks very much for your time. It's my pleasure. Thank you.